Hello there, beautiful internet and new adorable creatures of the beyond. Hope your guy is doing superb today. So I thought I should do my um, review on Inkscape and talk a little bit about some of the things that Inkscape does good and some of the things that it doesn't do so good. And this is not as a critique, but rather as a feedback to how to improve it. And since I've seen that uh, Affinity, the other software that I do my raster design, um, is getting merged with Canva, which Canva has a weird thing. It's obviously it's proprietary software and I think they're gonna make it a subscription based fee and blah blah blah. Anyway, Inkscape, sorry, Affinity is already kind of subscription type, but you have to buy the license for a full release once every few years and so on. And anyway, that's by the by, not important as uh, what I want to underline is the fact that Affinity itself was developed with ease in mind. And I'm going to put them side by side and more specifically Inkscape with Affinity Designer, which is the um, vector software that they are offering, the counterpart of Inkscape. Now, I've been using Inkscape for a very long time uh, and I'm very fond of it and personally I think that Inkscape is developed in such a way that is more specialized on workflow but unfortunately over the years it has become more and more enriched with uh, features and uh, they're all cramped out up together here and there and <laughs> it's, it's kind of a nightmare to navigate everything sometimes even i get lost like for example here i work with many tabs open now like if you see i, I need two screens in order to be able to put everything. If I would put everything on this side, uh, I, it's, it, it would be very crowded for me. And I'm not saying that having these uh, open tabs are inefficient, um, but it's difficult to navigate only with one screen for uh, one thing. And the other thing is that, look, here, for example, if I try to navigate between these things sometimes i get confused and i just click the wrong thing you know the wrong menu they're not super super intuitive it's more of a force of habit that i manage to click them right from time to time <laughs> and uh, inkscape is very modular you can do a lot of things in the preferences uh, related to how you may want to make it look and i can even make it look even more cleaner than this but the thing is you would have to kind of do this manually and set them up and save them somewhere and then import them in a new version and then there's no 100 percent guarantee that what you're importing is going to work in the new version and so on and sure you have uh, the the templates but i feel like the templates are not enough or they're not organized well enough the user interface is not organized well enough to be super friendly so i'll i'll demonstrate this is affinity designer and to be honest i i like the simplicity of it i don't particularly am fond of working in it because i'm so used to inkscape and I don't know, it's just, as I said many times, Inkscape is very dear to my heart. Plus, it's uh, open source, so I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, and with proprietary software, there's no guarantee that your licensing is always going to be yours. And you're not actually buying the software, you're buying the ability to use the, the software they're providing, you know? Because even let's say you have the key in 10 years, if the company fails, well, you are at the mercy of their servers. If they close down their servers, you won't be able to download the executable installer 
to install the software itself. So you're just left with a key serial key. <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't help you much while Inkscape is something that even if it's stopped developing right now other people might join and start a, a fork of the project and create something new out of it there will always be a continuity if people really really enjoy it so that's the main thing why I love Inkscape uh, but that doesn't mean that Affinity is a bad software quite the contrary it's very proficient in many ways but what it does better than Inkscape, in my opinion, is how it organizes its user interface. And this is still a bit heavy because I have shifted some, well, not many things. This is kind of like out of the box, but I have added a few extra tiny things here and there to enhance my workflow in it. But as I said, I, I'm not very fond of working in it. It's, it's not, I don't know, it doesn't hit that mark, especially here. I one thing that i really like about inkscape is when i work with the field tool i actually have everything all the sliders and everything in one go i don't have to click on different tabs to go and uh, find my sliders or find my color wheel well this one it's only the color wheel and you have some swatches here and it's yeah yeah not my favorite like it's not bad, it's just not my favorite. Um, but it has its tools quite well designed. And it's not trying to scare people away with uh, its options. I'm not saying that Inkscape is doing that, but when it comes to the user interface, it's <laughs> it feels like a, a sack of bricks is falling over you when you first time, the first time you open it. Um, but what they did here, and I highly, highly hope that Inkscape one day manages to do something like this, they have these personas and um, they have it in the other softwares as well because this is the vector design one. But what I like about it is that they have a pixel persona. And this is something that I think Inkscape really, really needs because the pixel, like, let me exemplify. If you're going to work with the... Um, where is the freaking pen? If you're gonna work with images, for example, you might want to mask them. And it's kind of a hassle to mask things in Inkscape when it comes to raster design. And I'm not impossible, but just mm, over the hand, you know? But now, let's say I want to do something with this. I go into the raster design or how is it called, pixel persona. And I can just literally take the paintbrush and just start coloring with, I don't know. I'm gonna color in here, inside here, you see? And I already have some brushes on the side. They also have this weird assistant thing that already, I mean, it's not bad, it's not AI. <laughs> I'm thankful that it's not AI. And I'm using the mouse right now, not the pen tab. So you can do these things and uh, even do some masking, some smudging if you want, you know, um, burning, whatever you wish. And I think this is a little bit overkill. I don't think Inkscape needs all of these tools, but from the things that I would highlight, uh, the lasso tools would be necessary. Um, selection tool not really i mean it could be if you want to select a specific color but i don't see it particularly useful pixel tool which is basically a pen sure okay you can have that um brush tool obviously yes eraser yes paint brackish uh, <laughs> paint bucket tool yes although it's called flat fill um and that's about it the these other ones are just extras um, I, I never really understood the need to have the color picker here in the menu sure maybe you are one of those people that needs to click on it but since you have it here or you can just press alt and use it however it's kind of irrelevant to have it there in my opinion and then they have the export persona which again super simple super nice 
I wouldn't have to have tabs open on the right all the time to export or do things with layers and so on. Plus, they have this thing here. This one stays fixed. <laughs> well, this one. Oh my god, let me show you. I'm gonna do a control F. You see? It pushes this. It's not fixed for some reason. I don't know how to fix this thing. And it's annoying. If you Even if you want to make it smaller, it just does this. It's like, ugh. No, just no. And then it goes like this. Why? What's the point of pulling it all the way like this? And I don't know. It's... Uh, it's not very well, well thought out. Then you have... I mean, it has a lot of tools that are very impressive, very powerful, very useful sometimes, but they're very situational, so situational as well. Like, I'm not always using extensions and filters, but I would really love to have them somewhere here, well organized. Because, for example, here... Um, well, this one doesn't have it. And actually, I don't need this part, you see? I can close this group entirely. Yeah, this one doesn't have it, but let's go with uh, Affinity. Because Affinity does have it, or maybe they have it here? Oh yeah, they do have it here. You see, they have the FX's effects, and then you have a warp group, and then you have some adjustments here. This is really nice, like incorporating extensions, and of course they have them they have them somewhere here as well, so I don't know exactly where. But uh, having them at hand and more compact is super useful. And they did this with uh, in Inkscape with the snapping tool, which is really nice. Usually, when you open snap tool, it's like this, super efficient. And if you want to see the advanced things, again, super efficient. You don't need to blurb everything before the this was an entire bar on the right here on or on top i don't remember and it was a lot of space that was taken by those tools sure they are useful but you don't use them most of the time or you have a predefined preset and you just go with that you know so rethinking the ui is very important in my opinion and including a raster persona or a raster Workspace, let's call it a workspace space. Uh, also, how many of you use this uh, measurement tool in your daily work? Not very often. It's again very situational. Uh, the same is with the uh, tweak tool. The same is with the what's called paint bucket tool, and this one as well, connector tool. I think it needs like five or six predefined workspaces where they rearrange how the tools are presented to you. Of course, all of them would be here, but you would have them hidden by a little arrow. And for example, if you're starting with the standard workspace, you just need the move tool, the node tool, uh, the shape builder tool, this free, and pen tool, and text and gradient. That's it. The other ones should be hidden by, or should be compacted, you know, you need to expand it with a, a little arrow. Then you go to the science workspace, for example. You need the measurement tool, you need the connector tool, you need, I don't know, the paint bucket tool, you need to do, I don't know, things like <laughs> whatever that scientists do these days, like uh, tables and graphs and charts and I don't know, doom machines. You need things like that to help you out but make them more specialized for that workflow rather than having everything just thrown at you like a bomb in your face, you know? Um, and it, it looks like a jungle all over the place. And again, this is not a critique. This is just my feedback on how to improve it because I personally got used to it, but if I would be a newcomer right now, I would be like, what the hell? Like, there, there's so many things going on up here, and you would be intimidated. You wouldn't even know what everything is used for. But the reality is that most of the time you don't need to use them. 
uh, unless you know what you really need need it for and you know what you're going for and you have a, an idea in your mind and you have a, already a, a workflow and a, a plan on how to achieve it using the specific uh, tools and having an experience with them but just having everything at hand in your face it's not helpful for newcomers or for casual users in general um and I think if they simplify this, and I already made the suggestion, for example, uh, let me see if it works in this one. No, not this one. Oh, they don't have it implemented here. Okay, they don't. Um, this one. If I press tab, I can see my entire screen. Look how clean and awesome this is. And if I did, I already know the shortcuts and everything. I I can select all of my uh, tools and just work like this, you know? I don't need to showcase everything on my screen. Obviously, I don't particularly like to constantly work like this because I don't have the brush panel display. So if I press tab, the brush panel dis disappears, <laughs> which is not very convenient. But I suppose there is a tweak for this, I hope. I don't know. On the other hand, Affinity cannot go into full screen mode, which I find it bizarre. Like there is no full screen in like an F11. That I think it's Cape has it, right? Let me see F11. Yeah, look at that. Genius. That's next generation kind of uh, a new UI. You know, and of course preferences are nice, but when you open the preferences tab, look at it. It's like <laughs> and I already have things uh, collapsed here, but you just get overwhelmed. So I really think a redesign of the user interface might take it a long way. Some tools being redistributed and rearranged correctly to fit the needs of uh, every user. And then adding the raster design thing, I think it would be like the best tool out there and i think it is slowly slowly developing that way but it's gonna take a while anyway it's a good software it's a superb software it does amazing things sometimes even better than uh, uh, affinity designer or uh, adobe illustrator it's just kind of a jungle to navigate through to get to those yummy delicious uh, functions and of course the more advanced functions i really really hope they get a better shape and more stability because whew, i have so many good ideas of, on how to improve my workflow but i just need them to be capable to cooperate with me and not for me to scream at my screen because it's just crashing all the time but i love the crashes of course <laughs> Okay, guys, I hope this gave you a bit of an insight of, on how interesting Inkscape can be and in what it can develop and how it can fit you. And understand that even if everything else fails, you'll always have Inkscape there for you to back you up because Inkscape cares about you. <laughs> okay, guys, stay awesome. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye, 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 bye.